Welcome back to my channel and today we are going to discuss about two clinical entities in the knee complex that is the genu valgum and genu valgum. You might have heard it as knock knee and bone knee. Here we are going to discuss about the biomechanical alterations and structural changes that are going to happen in genu valgum and genu valgum in detail. like genu valgum and varum we need to know about few axes of the tibia and femur right the one the first important thing is the longitudinal axis of the femur and the tibia in my previous classes i have described what is longitudinal axis a longitudinal axis is an axis that passes through the center of the long bone it is parallel to the long bone okay so in femur you know that uh, i described earlier in our introduction class the femur is slightly oblique in nature right now this is the this red line shows the longitudinal axis that is passing through the femur right and in tibia, the orientation of the tibia is nearly vertical, okay? Therefore, the longitudinal axis coincides to the center of the tibia, clear? Now, we have an axis which is known as a longitudinal axis, which is, of course, the axis that is passes through that as axis that passes through the center of the long bone. And due to the oblique nature of the femur, this axis is slightly shifted. Okay, whereas in tibia, it passes to the straight line to the center of the tibia itself. Now, there is another concept which is known as the mechanical as axis. Mechanical axis need not worry about mechanics. Mechanical axis can also be known as the weight bearing line or weight bearing axis. What do you mean by weight bearing axis? That is the axis through which the weight is transmitted. How is the weight transmitted in the hip joint? It is transmitted from the sacrum to the acetabulum and from the acetabulum to the head of the femur. So this will be a line joining the head of the femur to the center of the tibia and from there to the angle joint that is the center of the calcaneum. So this is a line connecting head of femur head of femur to center of knee joint center of knee joint to the calcaneum to the calcaneum center of the calcaneum that is the mechanical axis clear okay uh, once again i will tell the mechanical axis means it is an axis that passes through the center of the head of the femur to the center of the knee joint to the center of the calcaneum that is the weight bearing line clear this blue line indicates the weight bearing axis of the femur okay these are the two important things that you need to uh, remember in your mind before going into the discussion of genu valgum and varum once again summarizing we have two axes that is the longitudinal axis and a mechanical axis by now i hope it's clear for you now let us move on to the condition known as genu valgum and varum genu valgum and genu varum okay right we have conditions like a cubitus valgus cubitus varus okay we have angle known as angle of inclination angle of torsion etc in humor humerus as well as the femur in the head of the femur now let us move on to genu valgum now if you look at this uh, tibia and the femur we see that uh, there is a medial angle that is formed a medial tibio femoral angle is formed that is the angle between the longitudinal axis of the femur tibia which is as shown in the red line and to the longitudinal axis of the 
femur, the other red line. So here, in the medial aspect, there is an angle formed. This angle is known as medial tibiofemoral angle. What is it? Medial tibiofemoral angle, right? Very good. The medial tibiofemoral angle. What is medial tibiofemoral angle? It is an angle formed between the long axis or longitudinal axis of the tibia with the longitudinal axis of the femur right in the medial side this is the medial tibiofemoral angle this longitudinal axis can also be called as anatomical axis so this can be defined as angle formed between anatomical axis of the tibia along with anatomical axis of the femur right that is medial tibiofemoral angle now you see um here i have been noted there is a slight difference between the weight bearing axis as well as the medial tibiofemoral axis, right? The weight bearing axis as well as the longitudinal axis of the femur. That means the femur is tilted slightly away from the weight bearing line, right? That tilt is about 5 degree from the vertical okay five degree from the vertical therefore this medial tibiofemoral angle is this much it becomes 180 degree and from to here to here it is 185 degree so the total medial tibiofemoral angle is 185 degree approximately approximately equal to 185 degree or you can say that femur is tilted five degree from the vertical five degree from vertical okay or the medial tibiofemoral angle is approximately 185 degree right 185 degree because 180 is the horizontal line okay horizontal line means 180 this becomes 3 360 so this is the 185 degree so normal medial tibiofemoral angle is 185 degree or 5 degree from the horizontal line right now normally you see that the tibia the femur is not in the medial plane it is slightly tilted laterally that means generally we have a physiological valgus physiological valgus because the angle is not zero degree or minus five degree it is five degree away from the vertical that means your femur is tilted five degree from the medial plane or the center this is the center femur is tilted five degree that means normally each one of us you and me have a physiological valgus or physiological medial tibiofemoral angle of five degree we call it as physiological valgus valgus means always remember l stands for lateral lateral displacement or lateral shift and we have a lateral shift therefore it is known as the physiological valgus and that is equal to five degree okay or 185 degree good now when this physiological valgus increases greater than this five degree that condition 185 degree that condition is known as the genu valgum genu valgum is increased in medial tibiofemoral angle medial tibiofemoral angle greater than 185 degree when medial tibiofemoral angle is increased greater than 185 degree, that condition is known as the genu valgum. How it will be? Your femur will be shifted as such, right? Your femur will be shifted as such, okay? And this everything will move to the lateral side and even the shaft of the femur moves and it becomes like this, right? So what happens is that this angle increases here it becomes the longitudinal axis of the femur here it becomes the longitudinal axis of the femur so this angle increases greater than 185 degree and that condition is known as genu valgum so what is genu valgum it is a condition in which medial tibiofemoral angle increases greater than 185 degree or greater than 5 degree right now you know what can be genu valgum 
it is of course you know that it is uh, you can guess it it is decrease in the medial tibiofemoral angle less than 175 degree when medial tibiofemoral angle decreases less than 175 degree what happens is that is known as the genu varum that means the femur entirely shifts to the side more than the vertical the femur will be shifted to this side and that produces the condition known as what it is the genu varum so we studied we learned what is genu varum and valgum valgum means lateral shift that is increase in the medial tibiofemoral angle varum means decrease in the medial tibiofemoral angle less than 175 degree that's all about the definitions now we need to go in depth into the analysis of genu valgum and varum what is happening during genu valgum and varum biomechanically in our knee joint right let us move on to that genu valgum uh, let me denote this by this point okay that the longitude and axis let me draw another one let me draw it here and let me draw it here okay whenever there is a shift in the femur there can be a corresponding shift in the angulation in the tibia right see this can be that line okay? let it be that line okay what happens is in case of genu valgum okay and let it be our femoral femur compartment okay let it be our tibia and this will be our femur. what actually happens is the entire femur is shifted to lateral side entire femur is shifted to lateral side when femur is shifting the compressive force that acts on the lateral compartment of the femur because you know that it is coming together and it is coming together like this okay this increases so the lateral compressive force increases or stress on lateral compartment increases lateral compartment increases that leads to lateral compressive forces lateral compressive forces now you know that whenever a bone is compressed whenever a bone is compressed what can happen it can result into friction between the bony surfaces when there is friction ultimately it can lead to arthritis yes of course very good and it leads to joint arthritis it leads to arthritis it also can lead to before the bone can get disturbed there should be the damage to the articular cartilage because there is an articular cartilage that covers the bone. So it can lead to destruction of the articular cartilage. Okay. So this is a triad of symptoms or conditions or changes that can happen in case of genu valgum. What actually happens in genu valgum, the femur shifts to the lateral side and does the result the lateral compressive force increases. Whereas in medial side, you have a destructive force or tensile force. So in uh, genu valgum, the compressive force in the lateral compartment increases whereas in the medial compartment decreases on it leads to a tensile force that me means medial compartment moves away whereas the lateral compartment approximate each other it leads to increase in lateral compartment stress it leads to articular cartilage damage and it leads to joint arthritis more than that it can lead to joint laxity how can it lead to joint laxity? You know, this is the frontal plane dynamics. Okay, here what happens is now you see this compartment, this region comes together. What happens to the ligaments in this region? The ligaments in this region also gets narrowed or decreased in size. Decrease in size. Whenever a ligament is relaxed or loose, this leads to laxity of the ligament. Correlate to the second chapter in biomechanics about joint structure and function. Right? 
so it can lead to ligament laxity so the ligament laxity also occur in the corresponding compartment that is in the lateral compartment when there is ligament laxity what can uh, result it can result into joint laxity or joint instability so lateral compartment joint instability can also occur in cases of genu valgum so this is the lot of changes that are going to happen in genu valgum on to genu varum yes what is genu varum by now you can easily guess what is genu varum genu varum as i told is a condition in which the medial tibiofemoral angle decreases and ultimately you get a picture like this okay what happens is here this is the medial aspect this is the lateral aspect uh, here also for your reference is the medial and lateral aspects what happens is in genu varum okay there is the increased compressive force in the medial compartment just opposite that you can guess it so there is an increased compressive force in the medial compartment and it can lead to medial compartment arthritis medial compartment articular cartilage damage and finally the laxity of the ligaments in the medial compartment so these are the same events are going to be repeated in the genu valgum and varum opposite just that it op op occurs in the opposite compartment here it was in the lateral compartment here it was in the medial compartment so remember if it is genu varum the compressive load is is on the a uh, medial compartment because there is a medial shift okay the compressive load is going to be in the medial compartment if it is genu valgum the compressive load is on the lateral compartment i'll explain it much more better with the help of this one okay now you see this is the normal arrangement and you can see the femur is slightly tilted from the this is the vertical but in the resting position it is slightly tilted from the vertical so this is what you call the medial tibiofemoral angle and it is of course not 180 degree it is 185 degree or femur is 5 degree from the vertical all right now in cases of genu valgum this angle is going to increase right this angle is going to increase and correspondingly there can be changes in the tibia see this angle is increased when this angle is increased just look at there is decrease in the load in the medial compartment whereas there is increase in the compressive force in the lateral compartment the compressive force inside the lateral compartment increases in cases of this one the compressive force that is the compressive force inside the lateral compartment increases right and that is going to have produce the lateral compartment joint laxity and all the symptoms now what happens in genu varum this should shift the side right this is going to shift the side and what happens the lateral compartment becomes so free whereas the medial compartment friction increases and it lead to medial compartment articular cartilage damage and all the changes so this is what happens in genu varum and this is what happens in genu valgum the lateral angle increases and then normally by birth we have by the ages of uh, after the ages of birth we have an increased physiological valgus more than this 5 degree it can reach up to 8 degrees okay and by the age of skeletal maturity we have uh, the decrease in the um, what do you call in the angle mostly by the age of 7 to 8 the physiological valgus decreases Okay, we are not going to discuss much into the clinical implications of genu valgum and varum. Of course, there is a diverse implication, but we are going to discuss only these things. So it can decrease after the eight years or seven to eight years. And if there is an increase even after that in the 10th, 12th age, the valgum is increased greater than five degree or 185 degree. You call it as genu valgum condition. And of course, you have to go for the respective treatment. Now, let us see one more aspect in the genu valgum and varum that is like this is the condition known as genu valgum right if this genu valgum is coinciding or simultaneously present in both the knees what can happen both the knee joint can get approximated each other right and that is known as knock knee 
that is known as nokni ni will knock each other okay that is known as nokni it can occur also in cases in only one femur only one of the leg is having genu valgum then also this can get locked knocked into this opposite limb so this is known as the nokni so genu valgum is also known as nokni how to remember genu valgum okay valgum means actually the valgum means gum okay gum is going to stick together your knees all right you might have heard about this mnemonic gum is going to stick together the knee if you have a gum over here you can stick together that knee such a condition is known as genu valgum so what happens in genu valgum your knee gets tilted like this and what happens the come the there is always a constant rubbing between both the knees and that is known as genu valgum or gum like it is going to stick together or in genu valgum it is known as knee not knee or the knee is going to get sticked together whereas in genu valgum what happens this is going to get away from each other right like this the knee not, not this much i just exaggerated it the knee is going to be separated from each other that is varum the knee is going to be separated from each other in varum the knee is going to be separated from each other therefore we call it as bow knee therefore we call it as bow knee it looks like a bow it looks like an archery arrow archery arm bow that is why it is known as the bow knee so genu valgum is known as bow knee varum is known as bow knee and valgum is known as knock knee and how to remember that so remember valgum gum it sticks together so it brings both the knees together so both knees will rub each other when the person is going to walk whereas in varum it arches like this and when the person is walking he walks with a wide gap um, he walks with a wide gap between both his knee joints so that's all about the genu varum and valgum as well as um, in genu valgum and varum the mechanical axis what do you mean by mechanical axis or weight bearing line it is a line that is passing through the head of the femur into the head of center of the knee joint and to the calcaneum right what happens to this actually the femur moves when the femur moves you see the head of the femur also moves and when that happens the weight bearing axis itself will shift to the lateral compartment in valgum in varum this moves to this side so the head of the femur also moves so in varum weight bearing axis move to the medial side and that is why actually there is an increase in the compressive force because when weight bearing axis moves the entire weight is shifted to this newly formed axis and that result in greater level of compressive forces right that's all about the bony and uh, knock knee or genu valgum and varum and um, in unilateral and bilateral stance there is of course a difference in unilateral stance bilateral stance the weight bearing line passes through the center of our body when we are going for the unilateral stance what happens is that there is a natural adduction moment and there is a decrease in the base of support you know that in unilateral stance you have only one leg to support so your base of support is going to decrease and as a result your line of weight bearing actually shifts to your medial side you can just imagine when um, if you stand and stand in unilateral stance you can feel that there is an actual adduction moment and what happens is that you uh, to balance the base of support the weight bearing line itself moves medial that means there is always a medial compartment stress in unilateral stance in our day to day life when you are climbing stairs when you are walking in your gait in single limb stance etc this happens what there is an increased compressive load in your medial compartment and that is the reason why you have medial compartment osteoarthritis more than the lateral compartment osteoarthritis because in our day to day life in our cons in our all day to day activities the medial compartment stress is going to increase in man increase than the lateral compartment stress right especially in uh, walking um, for example if you are uh, in our day to day activities of single limb stance the weight bearing capacity or weight bearing load in the knee joint is going to increase where how much it can increase in running and walking it can increase 3 to 4 times your total body weight whereas in uh, landing jumping and landing it can increase up to 6 to 7 or 8 times so such a great load is actually being transmitted to your knee joint and that all gets transmitted mostly through your medial aspect of the knee joint and that is why you have a medial 
combatment osteoarthritis more than the lateral combatment osteoarthritis and one more aspect is there if you can just catch this that is when this compartment when there is the weight bearing line changing to the medial side what happens there is a natural adduction moment right therefore it this adduction moment is actually going to increase right when the weight bearing line is going to shift to your medial side the adduction moment what is the adduction moment the capacity or the force that is created by the adduction created over here it is going to increase in your unilateral stance and that adduction moment increases and therefore in patients with osteoarthritis you see a greater increase in the unilateral adduction moment how is unilateral adduction moment balanced by the objectives so we can measure it, right? That's just an app applied aspect. You may not remember about that. So summarizing genu valgum and varum, it is an increase in the medial tibiofemoral angle. Whereas decrease in the medial femoral tibiofemoral angle is genu varum. And there is a normal physiological valgus that is existing. If that is greater than 185 degree, that is genu valgum or greater than 5 degree or less than 175 degree, it is going to produce genu varum. Okay, with the help of the following diagram, let us see the shift in the weight bearing line to the medial side and the creation of the adduction moment. Here we can see the diagram of genu varum, normal knee, and genu valgum. You can clearly differentiate between what we have learned so far that is, between genu valgum, the varum, and the difference that it poses from the normal knee. And in this diagram, you can see a mnemonics where valgum, gum, it is shown, it is joining together. Varum, of course, you can remember rum, rum, if you place a bottle in between the knee, it is going to separate the knees apart. So, in that way also, you can remember. And this shows the diagram of a child with a genu valgum. And you can see how his knees are going to stick together. And here, of course, for your just for your information, I have included a diagram of the X-ray and the um, scanning report. And now, this is more important: the shift in the joint axis. This is the normal joint reaction force and normal joint axis which is passing through the head of the femur. And even that is, you can see that it is slightly passing medial to the knee joint. But in this condition, just uh, let us look in our unilateral stance in our day and in our daily life activities. What is actually happening? The line is completely shifted to the medial side that creates an adduction moment which I mentioned earlier and which is going to exacerbate the medial compartment problems. With that, we wind up the discussion of genu varum and valgum, and in tomorrow's session, we have the discussion of meniscus joint capsule and ligaments in the knee complex. Stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed to channel, kindly subscribe and click the like button.